Madam President, members, colleagues and friends of ICSU, ladies and gentlemen, first, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to the National Research Council of Italy and the Food and Agriculture Organization for being such gracious hosts and for helping to make the 30th ICSU General Assembly a resounding success. <clears throat> Ever since its funding eight years ago, ICSU has been a standard bearer for international science cooperation. The International Geophysical Year of 1957 and 58, in particular, began the golden age of Earth system science, whose legacies live on today. It was a defining experience. Bringing together the global science community to organize research on critical issues facing our world, we become ICSU's strength and calling. This gave birth to the global environmental change programs in the 80s, which continue to push the frontiers of our understanding. And along the way, ICSU also became one of the main representatives of science to international policy. The past three years have continued this rich tradition. The International Polar Year concluded as a huge success. Earth system visioning became a major global initiative and in many other efforts took concrete shape, such as the integrated research on disaster risk and the world data systems. These achievements were possible only because of the foresight, commitment, diplomacy, and teamwork of many individuals and bodies, both inside and outside of ICSU. We should therefore express our sincere appreciation for President Brzezniak, Vice President Rabio and Kuroda, Executive Director Chen, and other officers, the Executive Board, the Committee for Scientific Printing Review, the Committee on Finance, the Committee of Freedom and Responsibility of Science, and the Secretariat and the Regional Office Officers of ICSU. We must thank our national members, unions, associates, and interdisciplinary bodies. And not to be forgotten, we must thank our great partners, many of whom are present here today. But unfortunately, this is not the time to celebrate because as hard as we have worked, we have not yet succeeded in laying the foundation for a sustainable and equitable global civilization in which the entire Earth community is secure and prosperous. On the contrary, human pressure on Earth's buffering capacity continue to rise. Human population keeps climbing, and even while poverty and starvation persist, global consumption, carbon dioxide emission, and other impacts are still going up sharply. Indeed, as we heard Professor Lukström explain so well, we are going dangerously beyond many of the key planetary boundaries. The consequences are already beginning to show. From the decline of biodiversity and the ecosystem functions, to more severe and frequent extreme weather and climate events, a major concern is that there may be large discontinuities which could truly jeopardize human survival on Earth. If we are to avoid catastrophe and ensure humanity's continuation on this planet, the key word for the next few decades will be transformation. That is, we must begin to transform a global society into a truly sustainable civilization. This transformation 
to begin by breaking with the past. We must accede to the fact that we are living beyond our means and that our world as a whole is overdeveloped. There's no question that the developed countries must reduce their carbon footprint substantially. For instance, through drastic energy conservation. And the emerging and the developing countries must recognize that they cannot simply follow the path that the industrialized country took in their development. It's not sustainable. They will have to find new ways to proceed. Our transformation must in part be scientific and technological. Historically, the spread of science and technology, as well as sophisticated new materials and products, has boosted economic growth and industrial production. And they have improved almost every aspect of life, from health and food to energy and mobility, although much more so in the developed world. However, these advances have also led to an array of health and environmental problems. Thus, application of science and technology now need to be reoriented toward the sustainability transformation. For instance, we must heavily invest in technology to take humanity back to sunshine. For most of the past 1.5 million years, Humanity depended and thrived almost entirely on what the sun provided. However, in the last 250 years, we have come to depend on fossil fuels instead and dissociated ourselves from the nature. It is so important that we go back to the sun and associate again closely with nature. Also, the, the development of technology should no longer focus on individual consumer. Science and technology should not be about making profit by promoting individual consumerism. It should be about building a better world for all. However, this transformation must go beyond science and technology because there's no high-tech magic pill for this crisis. A core problem is with how we live and how we dream of growing our economies forever and consuming without limit. With an exploding population, unlimited desire are simply not compatible with a limited world. So our attitude, habits, and the ways of life themselves must change. This will involve redefining progress in the lifestyles we want. It must transcend big cars and big TVs and give us more happiness and meaning as well as a healthy and resilient earth. Our cultures and traditions will be critical here. After all, our ancestors lived for thousands of years in better balanced with nature than we have. Surely, there are profound wisdom in their ways of life from which we can learn. Of course, we are not talking about going backward, but rather better applications of science and technology. Such is the challenge for mankind to fundamentally transform and reinvent our civilization within the next few decades. Since science must have a role in this great transformation, how can global scientific organizations like ICSU and its partners help humanity continue and survive? For ICSU, this naturally starts with a mission to strengthen international science for the benefit of society and for the next six years. That mission must be delivered through the second strategic plan, which was carefully crafted with close consultation of the entire ICSU membership. We are fully determined to push ahead and see all of the plans 
major components to their success. Why would do that? X, X must not forget to critically re-examine re itself. A fast-changing world requires constant improvement and renewal. Therefore, an independent assessment of ICSU will be commissioned before the next General Assembly in 2014. I firmly believe that in fulfilling our mission and carrying out our strategy, primary theme of the near future must be action and solutions now. Generating knowledge has been Ixu's core strength, which must continue. But frankly, we already know enough about both programs and potential solutions to respond. What we do not have enough of is time. In my election speech three years ago, I expressed concerns for people in developing countries. Today, <clears throat> they still face huge daily challenges in food security, water, infectious disease, and so on. <clears throat> Improving their situation, preventing population explosion, and reducing poverty and starvation are pri priorities that need our attention right away. We must take immediate action to see that they are resolved. <coughs> Taking action now will require more resources. In the past, many excellent ideas were abandoned because there was no funding. This is really heartbreaking if there's a worthy idea. We must do all we can to find the resources. <coughs> Last year alone, the Secretariat and the Executive Board worked together to raise more than 1.5 million US dollars for ICSOS activities in Rio Plus 20 and the Earth System Sustainability Initiative, proving that this can be done. ICSU should establish a fundraising committee charged with finding the means to further great initiatives. But to strive for action globally, global science overall must also have much greater resources at its disposal. At the present time, in order to maintain security for their citizens, nations of the world together spend more than one trillion US dollars per year on defense. But today, greatest threat of all, climate change and human unsustainability are entirely new and different. These are not threats between nations, but by humanity and to humanity itself. They are global in nature, affecting all of us. What if we could just take 1% of that 1 trillion US dollars and use it for global sustainability research? That would be 10 billion US dollars per year. There's a lot of money, but that is the scale to which we must aspire for all involved. <coughs> Action, taking action now will require that we better utilize our impressive human resources. The past several years, I met many outstanding scientists who are deeply concerned about our world. Many of them say to me, Yuan, I want to help, but how? What can I do? They have the passion and the energy with the lake, the appropriate channel. So we must build platforms to channel these energies into positive action. Lastly, we must not only act quickly, we must act together. This is true within the issue itself, and it's true for the greater community of which ICSU is a part. 
the world has become much too complex for any one or two entities to go it alone. We all need each other now. It is not about who leads and who follows or who gets more credit. We have to put aside the little differences and focus on what each of us can contribute as a team to save our planet. Dear colleagues and friends, many of our best scientists believe that if we do not bend the curves by 2020 or even 2015, it will be too late to prevent catastrophe. To survive the crisis, we need nothing less than a deep transformation and reinvention of human civilization. There's absolutely no time to waste. We need action and solutions quickly. There are already many outstanding organizations that work, but ICSU can bring the weight of the global science community to bear. And we are absolutely ready to go to do our part. Let us get to work together now. Thank you very much.